فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله الذي جعل الحج مقاما للتعليم ووفق فيه من شاء من عباده إلى الدين القويم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما علم الحجاج وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى آله وصحبه خيرة وفد الحاج أما بعد then before we start the lesson إن شاء الله تعالى I want to make a tanbih on three points بإذن الله تعالى the first point is that Yesterday, some people were saying that um, they they had some questions on the book, and that I didn't answer any questions. So because of that, um, if you have any questions on the book, on the topic, on the book that I'm saying, or something that was unclear that I was saying, then write it down, inshallah. And uh, then inshallah, we will answer the qu- I will try to answer the questions in the, at the end of the lesson, and priority will be given to those questions that are written down, and I'm gonna, it's only on the book. Questions are on the book. Uh, the second thing be is that um, some uh, a brother basically just a point that was mentioned to me a few years ago, and it was a time in Hajj, uh, Hajj times. Actually, the second point is that whilst we're going through this book, this book of Hajj, you're going to come, up, you're going to realize that a lot of the points are not clear because, and you won't understand it fully. The reason of that is because. Something that one of my teachers told me on eight years ago, and he said to me that you will never understand Hajj properly until you actually go and do Hajj, and that's true. You're never going to understand it fully until you go and do Hajj. When you go and do Hajj, it's going to come, you know, firm in your head, inshallah ta'ala. ولذلك said that Abu Muhammad ibn Hazm al Andalusi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he made 100 mistakes in, in when he wrote about Hajj, and the reason for that was because he never done Hajj. So a person, يعني, you're gonna, some things might, you know, you won't understand it properly. But when you go ahead, inshallah, it will be more clear to you, inshallah. And the third point and the last point is that a brother, he told me a few years ago at Hajj, he said to me, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about fasting, ayyam min ma'adudat. He says, right? كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أيام من معدودات. Fasting is only for a few days. And why? And he said one of the benefits that come, come we get from this is that we that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that fasting you have to have patience. So just have patience for a few days. And similar to that is Hajj. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that. And this is the brother told me. He said that when and this was where we at Hajj. It was hot. It was hard. You know, Hajj is it's quite hard. And he said to me that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that about fasting. And he says that about Hajj as well. He says ayaman ma'adudat a few amount of days. So you have to have sabr on Hajj. ولذلك and the, the reason why I bring this up is because your brother is sitting down from 7 a.m. until 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. and you learn about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I like to remind you just a yaman do that a few days, three days you're sitting down, you're having sabr and bi ta'ala maybe this sitting that you're sitting down is going to be the reason why you enter into Jannah that the angels are surrounding this gathering inshallah ta'ala and everyone inshallah is going to be forgiven and maybe this is going to be the reason for your forgiveness so have sabr. Well, like they say that a man went to another man and he put his finger in his mouth. And that man put his finger in that, that person's mouth. And they were both biting. And they were waiting. It was a challenge. Who can hold on for the longest? So the one, the, the one who won, he asked, how did you hold on for so long? Someone was biting in your finger. He said, a yaman, do that. Just a few, a, few, a few minutes. I just have to wait a little bit longer than you. Just a little bit longer than you. That's it. I'm going to win. You get it? And well, you should take that as a qaid in your life. Everything that's hard upon you, just think about it. A yam and do that. A few days, a few minutes, a few minutes longer, and it's going to be finished. And then, and that is the difference between a person who goes high in levels of Jannah and in the dunya and in the akhirah, and the level of a person who is low. Well, he said it, it was mentioned to Imam Ahmed about sabr, and he said, With this, people were raised. This is what people were raised with. This is the difference between the, the person who's high and the person who's low. Sabr. So, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go through a few uh, fusul chapters on the book of At-Tahqiq wal-Idah li-kathirin min masail al-Hajj wal-Umrah li-Shaykh al-Allama Abdi Aziz ibn Ba'az rahimahullah ta'ala And we stopped at the point when he said Faslun fi hukmi wa musala ilal miqati fi ghayri ashwar al-Hajj And at this point, he mentions the ruling of the person who gets to the pace of miqat 
the place which is which we mentioned yesterday amiqat is the place where you're not allowed to go past with for a person who wants to do hajj or umrah without getting into the state of ihram so he now he's mentioning the ruling of this person who gets to this place the miqat one of the mawaqit one of the, the five miqats that we mentioned he gets there in the sun in the in the months which are not the months of hajj and we're going to go through this bab quickly and then we're going to the next bab is going to be in more detail because it's more important so he says the person who comes to the miqat is two types this person who gets to the miqat in a time that is not in hajj meaning is not in the months of hajj and we mentioned the months of hajj yesterday which are shawwal wadul qi'dah or wadul qa'dah you can say both wadul hijjah these are the three months of Hajj. If a person comes to the Miqat in other, in other than these, these three months, then he makes his intention to go to Mecca for Umrah and not for Hajj. Because the times of Hajj are only in these three months, meaning a person is only allowed to get into the state of Ihram for Hajj in these three months. Allah says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ no, He says, الْحَجُّ أَشْهُرٌ مَعْلُومَاتِ Al-Hajj are known months. And these months are Shawwal, Wadul Qi'da, Wadul Hijjah. These are the months where Hajj is allowed to be performed and uh, not performed, the intention for Hajj is meant to be made. So if a person gets to the Miqat now at a time which is other than Hajj, then he makes his Ihram for Umrah and he goes to Umrah and he does his Umrah and he doesn't do Hajj. And he can't do Hajj in this time because Hajj has a time and a place. Hajj is one of the Ibadat which has a time and a place and the time is this month of Dhul Hijjah and the place is Mecca. Athania and the second type of person, and I'll skip a lot of it, and so we're going to go Athania. أن يصل إلى الميقات في أشهر الحج وهي شوال ذو القعدة والعشر من والعشر الأول من ذي الحجة. and this is the second person is a person who gets to the miqat at the time of the the months of Hajj and the months of Hajj the Sheikh says right now is شوال ذو القعدة and the first ten days of the Hajj and this is what the Sheikh says رحمه الله تعالى and the other opinion is that the whole month of the Hajj is is a Hajj is a month of Hajj and this is the opinion taken by Ibn Umar and the reason why they said this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the months of Hajj Al-Hajju Ashhurun Ma'lumat They are months and you don't say 10 days of a month is a month, right? Well, that's one opinion but the other opinion is that the whole of the month is a month of Hajj therefore we say that uh, the other opinion is that it's not the 10 days rather it is the whole of the Hajjah So this person when he gets to that place you خَيَّرُ بَيْنَ ثَلَاثَةِ أَشْيَاءِ he is able to do three things. Either Al-Hajj Wahdahu, Al-Hajj Wahdahu, which is a Hajj alone, and that is what? We mentioned the three types of Hajj. Al-Ifrad, Naam, Al-Hajj Wahdahu, and that is Ifrad. Wal-Umrah Wahdaha, and Umrah alone, and that is? The second, one of the other types of Hajj. Al-Tamattu', because he's when Al-Tamattu' is going to come and do Umrah, and he's going to take away his Ihram, and then he's going to become uh, again for Hajj, so he's going to do separate ihram. So this ihram, which he does at the Miqat, is for Umrah, not for Hajj. Well, Jum'u Bainahuma, and he does both intentions, and that is Al Qiran, the last, the last type of Hajj. Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was in the Miqat, in the in the Qi'dah, in the Hajj, in the Hajj of Wada, chose his followers between these three types of Hajj. Because this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done when he got to the Miqat, when he was doing Hajj of Wada. He gave his companions the choice to choose between doing ifrad or tamattu' or qiran, or qiran. And so that's why a person is able to do any one of these three types of hajj. Uh, and then he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, we're going to read it fast. وَيَفْعَلُوا مَا ذَكَرْنَا فِي حَقِّ مَا وَصَلَ إِلَى مِيقَاتِ فِي غَيْرِ أَشْرُ الْحَجِّ Meaning he does his umrah or he does his hajj if he's ifrad. لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر أصحابه لما قربوا من لما قربوا من مكة أن يجعلوا إحرامهم عمرة وأكد عليهم في ذلك بمكة فطافوا وسعوا وقصر وقصروا وحل وحل امتثالا لأمره صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا من كان معه الهدي. so the what they done at that time is that the the companions they done different أنساك في حج some of them done for some of them they done ifrad and some of them done al qiran and some of them tamattu and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he done al qiran and the reason why he done that is because he had an animal that he was going to slaughter with him and some of the companions didn't have any animals 
So when he got when he finished al uh, marwa when he when he finished Safa al marwa he said to his companions لو استقبلت من الأمر ما استدارت ل ل قلبتها عمرة if I if I had a choice I would have changed it to عمرة meaning I would have been تمتع but the reason why he didn't do that is because he had an animal with him and the other companions did not so he commanded the other companions to become متمتعين to do تمتع instead of قران because they didn't have their animals with them so they say based on this. That the best type of Hajj for a person, uh, some of the ulama they actually say one, yeah, they say ifrad is the best, and some of them say tamatu is the best, and some of them say qiran is the best. Another group they say no, it depends on the person. This is what the Prophet saw sometimes. It depends on the person. If the person now he has an animal with him and he took, he brought the animal, for example, from Al Medina, uh, a sacrificial animal, he brought it for for Hajj, and then he's coming to do um, Hajj or Umrah, then for this person, an qiran is the best. And if the person doesn't have an animal, doesn't have an animal, they say. A tamatr is the best for that person. And some ulama they say al ifrad is the best because it is better for every travel, يعني every safar, for a person to have one act of ibadah. Meaning that it is better for you to do a different travel, يعني have a different trip for umrah and a different trip for hajj. And that's for that's to make the يعني تعظيم to make it better, يعني to to feel that you're doing both and you're aggrand aggrandizing both. And Subhanallah, I forgot something yesterday. Someone asked me that I didn't mention properly yesterday, which is that I mentioned that the the evidences of Umrah of the uh, obligation of Umrah are two types, right? I mentioned that, and I only mentioned one type. And someone reminded me that I didn't mention the second type, so I'll mention them again, both types. They say that the Umrah is some of the ulama they say is wajibah, and some of them they don't say that. And the evidences pertaining to this are two types. The first type are evidences which are clear and they say that Umrah is wajib, but wajibah, but it's not authentic. That's one category of the evidences that come from the Prophet That's one category. The second category is the evidences that have come, that have mentioned Umrah, but they are not clear in saying that it is wajib, even though they are authentic. They are not clear in saying that Umrah is wajibah, but the hadith is authentic. So based on this, we say, that uh, these evidences do not show that Umrah is wajibah, these evidences. Then we have another evidence which is from the companion Ibn Abdullah Ibn Abbas and other companions in which he said that Umrah is wajibah and it is not known from other companions that they have gone against this, meaning they have not opposed Ibn Abbas in his opinion. Based on this, the Shafi'iyah and the Hanabila, they say, they say that Umrah is wajibah as opposed to the Malikiyah and the Hanafiyah who say it is not wajibah. وعلم بهذا أن من أحرم أن من أحرم بالحج وحده أو بالحج والعمرة وليس معه هدي لا ينبغي له أن يبقى على إحرامه بل السنة في حقه أن يجعل إحرامه عمرة فيطوف ويسعى نعم وإن خاف المحرم نعم يسز كريزان عن يسز وفاء then he brings another benefit which is وإن خاف المحرم أن لا يتمكن من أداء نسكه لكونه مريضا أو خائفا من عدوه من عدو ونحوه استحب له أن يقول عند إحرامه فإن حبسني حابس فمحلني حيث حبستني he brings a benefit which is that if a person now he's going to do Hajj or Umrah and when he gets to his Miqat he doesn't know there might be something stopping him whether it be fighting, whether it be the fact that the road is not safe or something like that he fears that he might not be able to complete his Hajj in this case the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu told the companion Daba'at bint Zubair he told the companion Daba'at bint Zubair radiallahu anha when, he, when she came to him and, he, and she said that I, am, I fear that I won't be able to do Hajj or Umrah properly because I'm ill. So the Prophet وسلم, guided her and, and said, Hajji wa shtariti anna mahalli haythu habastani muttafaqun ali. He said that you do Hajj, but when you're doing your Ihram, you say, فَإِنْ حَبَسَنِي حَابِسٌ فَمَحَلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي If something stops me, then my حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي Then my place of where I'm going to cut off my ihram is wherever some that thing stops me. Meaning now, and the Shaykh actually mentions actually, so we'll just take it from the Shaykh's words. He says, وَفَائِدَةُ هَذَا الشَّرْطِ 
the, 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 the benefit for this condition, saying this while you're doing your umrah, is that أَنَّ الْمُحْرِمَ إِذَا عَرَضَ عُرِضَ لَهُ مَا يَمْنَعُهُ مِنْ تَمَامِ نُسُكِهِ If something comes to stop this person from completing his uh, nusuk, his hajj or his umrah, أَوْ صَدَّ عَدُوٍ جَازَ لَهُ التَّحَلُّلُ this person now or our enemy comes and blocks him off from doing his hajj or umrah then it is allowed for him to leave his state of ihram and la shay'a alay there's nothing upon him meaning he doesn't have to give any fidya he doesn't have to pay any penalty and that is because the prophet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran wa atimmu al hajj wal umrah lillah he says complete hajj and umrah for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this ayah the dalalah the thing that it shows is that it is obligatory for any person who gets into the state of ihram to finish hajj and umrah without leaving the state of ihram and it is haram for him to leave the state of ihram well, like they ask a question what is the what is the act of worship that it is sunnah but if you start it you can't stop it and they say it is hajj or umrah a hajj which is sunnah and umrah which is sunnah is mustahabah which is not the, the obligatory one so if a person now he intends to do a non-obligatory hajj when I mean, he already done hajj before and he goes to do Hajj. And then he's in the middle of while whilst he's going, he says, I don't want he starts the ihram, he becomes in the state of ihram, and he says, I don't want to do Hajj anymore, I'm just gonna stay in Mecca and not do anything. Is it allowed for that person? You say no, because Allah tells us in the Quran, wa atimul wal umrah Complete Hajj and Umrah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that if you start it, you can't stop it. As opposed to other uh, Sunnah acts, according to one of the opinions of the Usuliyin. And as for the person who does not condition, make this condition that فَإِنْ حَبَسْتَنِي حَابِسْ فَمَحَلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي He does not say this condition, then he has to complete his Hajj or Umrah. He has to complete it. So that's the benefit of this, of this condition. So, and this condition should be made when a person fears that they might not be able to complete their Hajj or Umrah. So he says, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَصْرٌ فِي حُكْمِ الصَّبِيِّ الصَّغِيرِ فِي حُكْمِ حَجِّ الصَّبِيِّ الصَّغِيرِ حَلْ يُجْزِئُهُ عَنْ حَجِّ الإسلام. And this chapter we're going to go through fast, inshallah, in which he mentions the, the hajj of a young person, of a young person, a kid basically, uh, a person who is the, below the age of uh, al bulugh of puberty. The, how has, is this hajj now uh, so correct, number one? And number two, is it enough for him, for him to never do, do hajj again? Meaning, meaning, is it enough for his hajj to Islam? You understand? You get that? Is it enough for him? He doesn't have to do hajj again. So he says, uh, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says that it is not enough for him to do that. And he bases on this evidence, which is, uh, that, that was narrated from Al-Bayhaqi and Ibn Abi Shayba, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhu, he said, قال, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أي, no, sorry, Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhu said, أيما صبي حج ثم بلغ الحنثى فعليه أن يحج حج, حجة أخرى any person who does hajj before the, before the age of puberty then he reaches the age of puberty then he has to do another hajj وَأَيُّمَا عَبْدٌ حَجَّ ثُمَّ أُعْتِقَ فَعَلَيْهِ حَجَّةً أُخْرَى حَجَّةً أُخْرَى the person who would, and any slave who does hajj and then becomes free then he has to do another hajj and the hadith is Hassan and it was narrated by Ibn Bayhaqi or Ibn Abi Shayba and this is from, the, from Ibn Abbas and this hadith the wording is mawquf meaning it is from the words of Ibn Abbas but the ruling is that it is marfu'ah, it is from the Prophet ﷺ, meaning the Prophet ﷺ gave this ruling. But Ibn Abbas said it in his own words. That's what we say, this ulama, when they mention that هذا الحديث موقوف لفظة مرفوع الحكمة. It is in its wording, موقوف, meaning it's from the companion. But it, in its meaning, it is marfu'ah from the Prophet ﷺ. And the evidence for this in this hadith is that in the narration of Al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala, Ibn Abbas, mentions and he says عني ولا تقولوا قال ابن عباس. He says memorize take this from me and do not say Ibn Abbas said this meaning who said it? The Prophet So he says that the Prophet so this hadith is the evidence to show that the Hajj of a young child their Hajj is not enough for the Hajj to Islam is not enough for the Islam but the Hajj is, of, is correct as opposed to the Hanafiyyah who said it's not correct meaning the kid cannot do Hajj but the majority of the Muslims they say it is correct, and the evidence for this is that the Prophet وسلم, when a woman came to the Prophet وسلم, and raised the child, and he says, and she said, Ali hadha hajj, can this one do hajj? The Prophet وسلم, said, Naam, yes, and for you is the reward. Walaki ajruhu, for you is the reward, meaning the hajj is correct. Naam. And some few points that we're going to mention in this bab, which is that 
uh, the ihram is done not necessarily by the child. If the, if the child is not the, by the, at the age of tamiz, meaning the, age, the, the child is not yet mumayyaz, meaning he cannot differentiate between good and bad, he cannot differentiate between things. So the child is not mumayyaz. We don't mean by mumayyaz uh, puberty. We mean that he cannot differentiate between things. In this case, the wali, the person who is looking after the child, he does his intention for the child and he does the things for the child. And they mentioned that when the person is doing, uh, throwing the rocks at the jamarat, then we, that we uh, the wali, the person who is looking after the child, they are the one who throw the rocks for the ch on, the, on behalf of the child with the intention of the rock being for me and the child. And also the tawaf, they say that you carry the child and you do tawaf with the intention of the tawaf for being me, for, for me and for the child. And كذلك sa'i, also the sa'i is like that as well. And they mentioned that it is better for a person to have two different intentions, meaning he does his own tawaf, then he does the tawaf for the child whilst carrying the child, and that is better. But if he does only one tawaf for him and the child at the same time, هذا يكفي is enough, هذا يجزي. And that is enough. And this is what we're going to go through uh, in the, that bab. And the last point in that bab is that the child who is now above mumayyaz is able to differentiate between things, but he's not at the age of puberty or the the child. In this case, the child does whatever he has to do, meaning he makes the child makes his own intention and he does all of the things that he is able to do. And if he's not able to do certain things like walk in tawaf, then he's carried. Or if he's not able to throw the rocks, then the rocks are thrown for him at the jamarat. And that's the last point that we mentioned in that bab. Fasulun, next chapter, which is fi bayani mahdurat al ihram, which is the Mahdurat, the things that are prohibited in the state of Ihram, and this we're going to go in a, few, a bit more detail. And that is uh, the uh, generally the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala he splits it up and he doesn't put it in one order, so we're going to put it in one order for you and you can write it down, inshaAllah Ta'ala. So this is Mahdurat al Ihram Tisa, there are nine things that are prohibited for a person who is in the state of Ihram. This is what we're going to talk about in this chapter. The things that are prohibited for the person who is in the state of, of Ihram, and they are nine. Number one, حلق شعر الرأس وسائر شعر الجسد And that is to remove hair from the head or any other part of the body. So if a person is in the state of ihram, they are not allowed to remove any hair on them. Number two, تقليم الأظافر Number two is to cut the nails. To cut the nails. Number three is تغطية الرأس, الرأس للرجل To cover the hair for a man. A man is not allowed to cover his hair, whether it be by a hat, whether it be by anything that covers hair directly. A hat will mean, as for umbrella, or a car, or a bus, it's no problem. Although some ulama do say that it's not allowed, like in, according to the majority it's allowed. Meaning, if something is uh, not connected to the body, and it is moving, moving with you, for example, a car, you're mo it's moving with you, then they say it is allowed. Even though you will find some people who say it's not allowed, so don't be too harsh. Uh, and the third type of thing that they are allowed to cover you above you is something that, and this is a bit ittifaq, there's no difference of opinion, is that something that does not move. For example, a building, like this, a building. I'm allowed to cover my hair with a building, even if I'm in the state of Ihram, and there's no difference of opinion on this, as opposed to the car, in which there is a difference of opinion, but uh, Wallahu alam, it is allowed. And a tree, for example, it's allowed, no difference of opinion. But what is not allowed is a hat. Imama, or something like that, you know, you understand? That is what is not allowed for a person to cover their hair with. Number four, looks al للرجل To wear clothes which are, they say al which is to sew. And this, this word makhit is not actually found in the, in the wordings of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam. One of the first people who used it was Ayyub al sikhtiyani who used al makhit And that is clothes which are made to fit body parts. That's what we mean by sewn clothes. Some people, they might think just sewn clothes. But most clothes are sewn anyway. But what we mean by this is clothes that are made to fit the body parts. Trousers, you know, it has shirts like that. This is what we mean by al makhit And this is specifically for the man. As for the woman, they're allowed to wear whatever they want, except for... I mentioned this yesterday. And niqab and, and gloves. And niqab and gloves. The woman is not allowed to wear that. But they're allowed to cover their face with something else. Yani al khimar, and they put it above their face for them, for those. Yeah. 